Hey everybody and welcome back to another Python scripting tutorial. In this video we're going to be looking at a couple of things. We're first going to look at how to create a property group which will contain a bunch of custom properties and then we're going to display them on a panel. So let's go ahead and uh, change this to the scripting workspace. And then if you want make a bit of space let's just close this panel here. This one as well. So we're going to need a couple of things for this to work. We're going to need a panel, an operator and a registration section. If you want, you can go to templates, go to Python. Then if you scroll through and find UI panel simple, you could use this as a starting point. But instead, I'm just going to load up a basic template script that I created earlier. And as always, if you guys want to follow along, there'll be a template script you can download in our blog. So check out the link in the description. So as you can see, it's just a basic panel which is going to be in the 3D view. It's going to be in a new tab. It's got a whole bunch of stuff that we will be changing. We also have an operator which at the moment does nothing. And we also have the updated registration method. So again, download this if you want to follow along or if you want, you can just wait to the end and download the whole script. It's entirely up to you. So let's go over here and run script. Let's see what we're working with. Go over to the 3D view, press N. And then we go down here to the new tab. So this is the panel we're going to be working with. As I mentioned, there's a whole bunch of stuff we don't need. So let's go ahead and get rid of it. From here, I'm going to go all the way up to OBJ. Just delete that. Now if we run script, update it, we just have a button that does nothing. But that's okay, we're going to create our own custom properties and then display them. So let's go ahead and do that. So first we need to create a property group. So let's go to the top, make a bit of space, just so we can see what we're doing. Then I'm going to type class and give this a name, I'm going to call this my properties, open and close parentheses, add a colon, then in here I'm going to type bpy.types.property group, just like that, and now in here we can enter as many different custom properties that we want, and if you want to learn more how to create custom properties, I'll link to a video up here where we add custom properties to um, a pop-up dialog box. Creating the properties is essentially the same way. Um, I'm going to quickly just show you how to do that. So first we're going to need a reference, which we're going to use to call upon this custom property. So for this example, I'm going to say my underscore string, add a colon. Then I'm going to type bpy.props.string property open and close parentheses then in here i'm just going to say name equals quotation quotation this is going to be a text input so maybe something like enter text and then let's go to the end hit enter and let's add another one my underscore float then again bpy dot props dot float property open and close parentheses and again we can enter a few arguments here such as the name and again if you wanted to add more arguments such as the minimum and maximum soft underscore min equals and that should be zero add a comma soft underscore max equals 10 100 thousand you can put whatever you want then let's add one more property, my underscore enum, bpy.props.enum property. Now we've done enumerator in the past, which was for the dialog box, but this time we're going to be putting it inside the panel. So again, most of you might already know how to do this. If you want to check out that video, there is a link up here. So let's open and close parentheses. Now what I'm going to do is just space things out a little bit differently. I mean, you don't have to do this. This is just purely just to make things look better. So then inside here, I'm going to hit enter. Then I'm going to press tab just to indent it. Then I'm going to type name equals, give this a name. I'm going to call this enumerator slash dropdown. Again, you can call this whatever you want. Then after the quotation, I'm going to add a comma hit enter we could give this a description description equals quotation quotation add some text here then after the quotation again we need to separate this with a comma then hit enter and now the most important argument is the items which is going to be a list of the options that we want to give the user so items equals and again as I mentioned it's a list so we need to open and close square brackets 
Now, before I do anything else, I just want to hit enter a couple of times and then I'm going to press backspace just to move this over. Now, it's not really necessary, but I like to do it to keep things looking tidy. And then back in here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hit enter. Now, within here, open and close parentheses. This is going to be our first option. For our first option, we need to give this an identifier name. So I'm going to press apostrophe twice. Then in between here, we can give this an identifier name. You could say option one or for convenience, I'm going to get rid of all this and just say OP1. Then after the apostrophe, I'm going to add a comma, then press quotation, quotation. This is going to be the text that's displayed on the option. So this is option one. Then after the quotation, add a comma and then just add two more quotations and we don't actually need to enter anything in here. So now we can see this is our first option that the user can choose from. I'm going to control C to copy this, go to the end and we need to separate this with a comma. Hit enter, then I'm going to move this over by pressing tab twice and I'm going to paste this in. Then since we want another option, I'm going to add a comma again, hit enter and then just paste this in. And there we go. So we have three identical options. Let's go ahead and change that. Let's go to the second one here, change this to option two. This one, change it to option three. Do the same for the text. And now we have three different options and that's our enumerator done. So now we have three custom properties that we will hopefully will be displaying in our panel. We first need to register this. So I'm gonna click this and copy it. Then go down to the registration section as I mentioned, this script is using the updated registration method. So we have this list with our class names. Now what I'm going to do is just go to the beginning here, control V, paste this in, then add a comma. And there we go. So we do need to place this at the beginning of the list. So now our properties has been registered. This is all good. We want to display each one of these on our panel. So we would need to enter it here in the draw method. But as it stands right now, it's not actually going to work. We need to do one more thing. So if we go back down to the registration section here after the bpy.utils.register, I'm going to hit enter. So we just need to type bpy.types.scene with a capital S dot my underscore tool, though you can name this whatever you want, but make sure you do remember your reference. So my tool equals bpy.props dot pointer property open and close parentheses and this argument is type equals and then we just need to add the name of our property group so copy this paste it down here and there we go and then that's registered we need to tidy it up by unregistering it as well so go down here hit enter and then type del for delete and then we just need to type bpy.types.scene.my underscore tool. So now this is done, we can use our property group in a number of different operators or panels. So let's first go to the main panel. Here after layout, we need to create a couple of references. So I'm going to type scene equals context dot scene. Now we need to reference the tool. So I'm going to say my tool. Again, you can call this reference whatever you want. So my tool equals scene dot my underscore tool. Uh, now we have this, we can actually add the properties. So to add a property, we could use the row or we could use the layout. So layout dot prop, open and close parentheses. Then inside here, we can type my tool, which is this reference here, then add a comma then quotation, quotation. And then in here, we just need to type the name of whichever property that we want to add. So if we go back to the top, we could add the string or we could add the float or we could add the enumerator. Let's start with a string. So I'm gonna copy this and then just paste this in here. So now if we hit run script, we can see it now displays our custom property and we can enter text. Though it's not actually connected to anything, we'll do that in a second. You can see it displays the custom property. Let's copy this. Let's paste it in two more times and then change this for the other two custom properties. So my float and, and my underscore enum. Hit run script and we can see it now displays the other properties. So this is our enumerator. 
change the option, doesn't do anything. So we can see anytime we want to add our property, all we need to do is make sure we have this reference. So we first need to reference it here, my tool equals scene dot my tool. And this my tool is referencing all the way down here, down here, which is then being pointed to our property group, which then enables us to choose one of these custom properties. So that's kind of how it works. Hopefully that makes sense. So now we have this um, they're all unconnected. They don't do anything. So let's go ahead and finish this off by connecting it to something. So go down to our operator here. We can see right now in the execution, there is nothing. So let's go ahead and add a few things. So let's say we want three different options. The first one's going to add a cube. The second one's going to add a sphere and the last one's going to add Suzanne. So before we do anything, let's go back up to the top back to our custom properties and let's change this text to add cube, add sphere, add Suzanne. There we go. So then if we run script, so now we can see it says add cube sphere Suzanne. So I'll go back down to the operator. So we need to create a couple of references as we did before. We could actually go back to here and copy these, copy this and then paste it in here. So now we have this reference to use again. So now we have that, we can say if my tool, which is that reference here, dot my underscore enum is equal to, then add apostrophe twice. And then we need to type the identifier. So I called this OP1. Then at the end, if we add a colon, so we're saying if my tool dot my enumerator is equal to option one. And if we go back up and see option one is to add a cube. So if the enumerator is equal to option one, hit enter and then we can add a cube. So that would be BPY dot ops dot mesh dot primitive underscore cube underscore add so let's just get rid of everything in the scene hit run script and then see if it adds a cube so it does that's great let's also make sure it doesn't add a cube when we choose a different option yep that's fine same for that so now we just need to repeat the process for these other two options so we could just copy this and go to the end hit enter now we can see if we paste it here, we'll be still under the condition of this option one. So we don't want to paste it here. We need to press the left arrow on the keyboard. Just move over. Now we can see we're in the same line as the other if statement. So we can paste this in. Then for this one, we just want to change this to option two. And we also don't want to add a cube. So change this to UV underscore sphere. Go to the end. Hit enter. Move to the left. Paste this in change this to number three and if you have more options just repeat the process uh, this one is going to be Suzanne so for this it's monkey and again if you don't know the names or the code for this just go over to the 3d view shift a go to whichever object you want to add in if you have the tooltips enabled it will pop up there with the python code if you don't just select one of these and then it'll tell you down here what the code is and in fact you could actually copy it so select it copy it and then paste it in so now we have this, let's quickly test it. So run script, I'm just gonna delete everything in the scene. Let's first add a cube, then sphere, and finally Suzanne. There we go. So it's pretty simple and we can do a couple more things like for example, um, enter a name. So when we add an object in, we can already give it a name. Then it's not limited to just this. You can add as many different things as you want. You can control different things. It just depends on uh, what you're working on, I guess. So let's go ahead and start with the name. Um, let's open up this panel. If we go down to the object tab, we can see this field here. If we just click in here and then hit enter, we can now see that down here it says bpy.context.object.name equals Suzanne. So if I click this, copy it, then go here after the cube. I'm gonna paste this in. Now this is saying whatever the selected object is, we want to access the name and then we're telling it to be Suzanne. But in this example, we want to make sure that the user has the option to change the name. So let's get rid of this. 
So we want this to equal the string property. So it's pretty much the same thing as we did here. We're going to say my tool. Then instead of it being dot my enumerator, we want it to be the string. So it'll be dot my underscore string. So we just copy this and add it to the other two. Then if we run script, let's just delete all of these. Then let's add a cube and give this an awesome cube name. Hit operator and if we look over here we can see it's been renamed to whatever we enter. So you can see it's as easy as that. Now we can add more things, we can add different things depending on what you want to change. It's entirely up to you. I'll quickly do one more thing which is the scale. So what we need to do first is change this to a vector. So I'm going to quickly go back up to the top, find our float. I'm going to change this name first of all to float underscore vector. Then over here we need to change it from a float property to a float vector property. And we can keep these values the same hit run script. Uh, before you hit run script, I should go back down here to the, the property since I renamed the uh, reference, so float underscore vector. Then if we hit run script, we now have a vector value. So to change the scale on these options is very simple. We have an object selected, go to the object tab. Let's first find out what the X value is. So if we go to X, just hit enter. Now we can see down here, I'm going to copy this code, go back to our first option. So in our operator, go to the first option, hit enter, paste this in. So this says whichever object is selected, scale zero, which is X, is equal to one. Well, instead of it being equal to one, we want it to be equal to this option here. And again, it's very much the same as we did previously. So let's do this again, my tool dot my underscore float underscore vector. Now obviously we need to tell it which vector we want to use and we're using this first one here because it's going to be x, y and z. So the first one is always going to be index zero just as it is on the scale. So let's open and close square brackets. Then inside here we're going to type zero. Let's make this make a bit more space and that's the first one done. That's the x done. I'm just going to copy this paste it in a couple more times. Then we just need to change the index numbers on these. So I'm going to change this to one, this to two, this to one, and this to two. So now we have this, well, let's just copy all these. Let's just copy these three and make sure we add it to the other two options as well. Otherwise they won't have scaling options. And there we go. So now if we hit run script, let's change this to Suzanne give her a name and then let's give some scale values maybe 10 by 10 by 10 and then hit the operator button and there we go we have a huge Suzanne monkey head so there we go that's how to add an enumerator and other custom properties to a main panel we've also took a look at how to create a property group which is quite useful if you want to use it across multiple different operators or panels so yeah, hopefully this video helped. If it did, be sure to hit that like button. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.